A big and tasty for just a dollar? How do you do it? What's your secret? Fast food, Diet Cokes, and what the heck is a blizzard? So what do these three things have in common? Yep, we're taking a look at 10 of Donald Trump's most notorious food moments. Together, Grimace, we could own this town. Pizza without the dough. It's wrong, isn't it? But it feels so right. Let's talk pizza, the universal love language of foodies everywhere. Who can resist a perfectly cheesy slice? Not Donald Trump, that's for sure. But when it comes to the 45th president of the United States, he has a rather peculiar way of indulging. It's not the pizza itself that Trump craves, it's the toppings that tickle his fancy. He's made it abundantly clear that he prefers to enjoy his pizza by scraping off and savoring the toppings while leaving the dough behind. In an interview with U.S. Weekly, Trump himself revealed that he never ate the dough, opting to scrape off the toppings. Can I have the last slice? Actually, you're only entitled to half. His reasoning? Well, he claimed it was to cut down on calories, but given his penchant for fried chicken and hamburgers, with just one bun, mind you, one has to wonder if it was really about calories or simply a deep love for sauce and cheese. But wait, there's more. In a bonus culinary faux pas, Trump once took Sarah Palin to a Times Square pizzeria. And how did he tackle the New York-style pizza? Brace yourselves for this one. He used a knife and fork. That's right, a knife and fork to eat pizza in the heart of the Big Apple. How dare you? Well done, steak. And believe me, I understand steaks. It's my favorite food. Washington, D.C.'s Trump International Hotel is a place known for its lavish decor and upscale dining. It's the kind of establishment where you'd expect patrons to savor the nuanced flavors of a perfectly cooked steak. But when it comes to the 45th American president, expectations often take a back seat to surprises. In 2017, a curious reporter from the Independent Journal Review secured a reservation at this swanky steakhouse, hoping to uncover what culinary delight the commander-in-chief preferred. James Corden shared the reporter's findings on his late-night talk show. Donald Trump ordered a $54 dry-aged steak well done and ate it with ketchup. That sets off the flavor of a steak like some ketchup. Yep, you heard that correctly. Ketchup on a $54 steak. Now that's not something you'd expect to see anyone do at a high-end steakhouse. But this wasn't an isolated incident. According to his former butler, Trump had a habit of requesting his steaks to be cooked well done. And yes, they'd be smothered in ketchup. It's a culinary preference that has raised eyebrows and elicited chuckles from food enthusiasts who believe this is simply a waste of a good steak. Lost forever. McDonald's. What did you do? Everybody's always blaming me for everything. So picture this. It's the early days of 2016, and the world was still fresh with the idea of Trump in the White House. After a press conference, reporters threw a series of rapid-fire questions at him, and that's when he dropped the fast food bombshell. Trump revealed that his go-to item at McDonald's is the fish delight. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, there's no such thing as the fish delight on the McDonald's menu, and you'd be absolutely right. It's the kind of slip-up that can happen when you've eaten your fair share of fast food without actually navigating the menu yourself. What did Donald Trump order? That fish you like sometimes, right? <laughs> what he probably meant, we assume, was the filet of fish. But wait, there's more. In 2017, it was revealed that Trump's regular McDonald's order consisted of not one, but two Big Macs, two filet of fish sandwiches, and a chocolate shake. That's a mouthful, quite literally. But it gets even stranger. In 2018, Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, let us in on a little secret. The president prefers his burgers with just half a bun. It might seem like a health-conscious move to cut down on carbs and calories, but when you consider the double helping of red meat, it's a bit like ordering a diet soda with your extra-large fries. French fries, sir. First time here? Well, you don't need to be president of anything to hit that subscribe button, so go ahead and smash it. Thanks. Thank you very much. KFC. Mr. Trump 
would like a hamburger to go. We all know that Donald Trump's love for fast food doesn't end with McDonald's. He's a fan of various fast food chains, including KFC, the iconic fried chicken haven. Fried chicken, you say? What's the big deal? Well, it's not so much about what Trump was eating as it is about how he chose to eat it. On August 2, 2016, during his presidential campaign, the future president took to Twitter and shared a snapshot of himself enjoying some KFC. In this snapshot, Trump was indulging in a KFC meal, but instead of using his fingers like the rest of us, he wielded a knife and fork like a true gourmet. We would like your finest champagne and your longest fork and knife, please. Yep, a knife and fork to tackle a $20 fill-up bucket meant to feed a small group. Who eats KFC with utensils? Well, folks, Donald Trump does. Now, some might argue that this photo op was a carefully staged move by his campaign to portray Trump as an everyday, down-to-earth man of the people. After all, nothing screams ordinary quite like dining on KFC while soaring in your private jet. Forget the red carpet! Private jet! Breakfast. Unidentified breakfast food on the house? Terrific. Let's talk about the most important meal of the day, shall we? Breakfast. Well, not according to Donald Trump. The man himself isn't particularly fond of breakfast, and honestly, who can blame him? While some folks hail breakfast as the meal of all meals, for others, it's just not a top priority. In a 2016 interview with Fox News, Trump candidly revealed his morning dining habits, saying, If I can, I'll avoid breakfast. In terms of that, I will have a lunch, but my big thing is dinner. Breakfast, if I can avoid it, I'm very happy to do that. So clearly, he's not one to rise and shine with a hearty breakfast spread. But when the breakfast bug does bite, what does Trump indulge in? If it's vegetables, he doesn't want to see them. Well, his morning options are surprisingly ordinary. He opts for either bacon and eggs, cereal, or a good old McDonald's McMuffin. No coffee or tea for him, though. When it comes to his bacon and eggs, he's quite particular, requesting his bacon cooked medium and his eggs over well. For those not fluent in American diner egg lingo, that means the egg is fried and flipped during cooking with a fully cooked yolk. Here's where it gets a tad concerning. A dietitian who analyzed Trump's breakfast choices pointed out that the processed bacon he favors has been linked to health risks, and his high-protein diet can put added pressure on his organs if he doesn't hydrate adequately. You guys need to drink more water chocolate cake. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. It's April 2017, and the stage is set for a pivotal moment in international diplomacy as Donald Trump welcomes Chinese President Xi Jinping to his Mar-a-Lago resort in Palm Beach, Florida. The summit, their first bilateral meeting since Trump assumed the presidency, was a high-stakes affair aimed at diffusing tensions and addressing long-standing trade issues. Amid the carefully orchestrated greetings and photos photo ops designed to smooth over any rough edges in their relationship, another global crisis was unfolding. News of a chemical attack by Syrian government forces on civilians in Khan Sheikhoun was making headlines worldwide, casting a shadow over the gathering. The shadow is upon us, Erdogan. As Trump and Xi sat down to dine, the U.S. president made a momentous decision to launch Tomahawk missiles at a Syrian airbase as a response to the chemical attack. However, when Trump recounted this critical moment to a Fox Business anchor, his focus seemed to be on an unexpected detail. In vivid detail, he described the delectable dessert that accompanied their meeting. We had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen, and President Xi was enjoying it. With a tone of intensity, he continued, So what happens is, I said to President Xi, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq and I wanted you to know this. It must have been an extraordinary piece of chocolate cake because Trump seemed to forget he'd ordered the launch on Syria, not Iraq. I just wanted cake. Alcohol abstinence. And to this day, I've never had a drink. And I have no longing for it.
When it comes to the world of spirits and libations, you might be surprised to learn that Donald Trump is, well, quite the teetotaler. It's a fact that stands out amidst the glitz and glamour of his real estate empire and the high-stakes world of New York business. The reason behind his abstinence from alcohol is a solemn one. Trump has openly shared that he's never taken a sip of alcohol in his life. Why, you ask? It all goes back to his elder brother, Fred Trump, who tragically succumbed to alcoholism at the young age of 42. Fred's heartfelt advice to his younger brother was crystal clear. Don't ever drink. What's that? It's like a non-alcoholic beer. It's got no, no alcohol. It was a sobering lesson that Donald took to heart, steering clear of alcohol throughout his ascent in the real estate industry and beyond. In fact, Trump's resolve to abstain is so strong that he only makes an exception when attending church services, where he has indulged in a modest sip of wine, which he's described as about the only wine I drink. The only other known event where Trump drank was at a 2019 luncheon hosted by the Secretary General of the United Nations. Trump participated in toasts, taking what was described as a sip on two occasions before passing the glass off to an aide. It's a solemn aspect of his life that stands in stark contrast to the boisterous world of business and politics. Oh, it's like night and day! Dairy Queen Blizzards No more Oreos! Trump recently found himself visiting a Dairy Queen in Council Bluffs, Iowa while on a campaign tour. Dairy Queen, renowned for its delectable frozen treats, boasts a menu filled with fan favorites, and at the very top of that list stands the illustrious Blizzard, a soft-serve ice cream delight expertly blended with an array of tempting mix-ins. It's been a fixture at Dairy Queen since its introduction in 1985. However, on this particular day, as Trump engaged with employees at the counter, he found himself in uncharted dessert territory. Where am I? I must have taken a bad step. The crowd eagerly clamored for blizzards, and Trump, seemingly puzzled, couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Everybody wants a blizzard. What the hell is a blizzard? He exclaimed, throwing his hands in the air, prompting laughter from the crowd. It seems he wasn't familiar with Dairy Queen's most well-known menu item. Trump then turned to the employees and quipped, Take care of the people, okay? Will you take care of them for me? And we'll do the blizzard thing, all right? The question is, did he try one for himself? Yeah, he did, didn't he? Diet Coke. Because of the red button. What does that get you when well, you press it gets the red you a button? Coke. When it comes to beverages, Donald Trump has a taste that's every bit as distinct as his fast food preferences. You might be surprised to learn that he's a devoted aficionado of Diet Coke, and he's not just sipping on it occasionally. No, according to the New York Times, the former president indulges in at least a dozen Diet Cokes every single day. Now go get me a Diet Coke! He even had a special button on his desk for this purpose that summoned a butler to bring him his favorite beverage, a presidential perk that would make any soda lover envious. Now, let's put that in perspective. Even in a country where sugary drinks are a national pastime, a dozen sodas a day, whether diet or not, is a bit over the top. It's a caffeine jolt that would make most people jittery just thinking about it. My head hurts. Fast food for all. It's not probably healthy, but I'm not sure I believe in that. In January 2019, Trump orchestrated one of the most iconic and notorious feasts ever seen at the White House, and it didn't involve silver spoons or fancy china place settings. Here's the backstory. Due to a government shutdown, the usual White House staff were furloughed, leaving Trump's team in a bit of a pickle when the national championship LSU Tigers football team came knocking on the door. The solution? A fast food extra extravaganza that would go down in history. The president himself hosted the team, accompanied by an array of beloved fast foods, including McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, and pizza. It was a junk food lover's dream come true. We have pizzas, we have 300 hamburgers, many, many french fries. Trump proudly declared the meal patriotic and claimed it included a whopping 1,000 hamburgers. However, the reality was a little less extravagant, with closer to 300 burgers making their way onto the buffet. The media couldn't resist poking fun at the spectacle, but you can bet that some of the football players were secretly thrilled to ditch the usual fancy fare for a taste of the familiar. But the fast food feast didn't end there. In March, 
March 2019, even after the government shutdown had concluded, Trump repeated the trick, this time treating a visiting football team from North Dakota to a spread of Big Macs and Chick-fil-A sandwiches. And the sales for Chick-fil-A went through the roof. Fill up on more great videos. Just tap or click. And if you haven't done so yet, smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.